How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is still Redox Processes Volume Number 4, What Are Voltaic Cells? Let's go. Okay, Volume 4, What Are Voltaic Cells? We look at construction, reactions, anode and cathode. The IV understandings and applications focus around voltaic cells and their construction, also identifying what processes occur at what is known as the anode and the cathode. We need to be able to construct them and then identify reactions as well. So what is a voltaic cell? A voltaic cell is an apparatus for generating electricity through a spontaneous redox reaction. And it's also an exothermic reaction. So as soon as we join the two half cells together, it releases energy and generates a current. A voltaic cell is comprised of two half cells. A reaction takes, an oxidation reaction takes place in one half cell, a reduction half re reaction in the other cell. A battery is essentially a voltaic cell, just a much more advanced one. One of the first galvanic cells set up was one, the one on the left hand side of the screen here, which is known as a Daniel cell. It contains beakers, and it contains electrodes and solutions, and it's a lot harder to set up. But essentially what we have is a zinc half cell and a copper half cell. In our zinc half cell, we have a zinc electrode, a zinc solid, and that's submerged in a zinc solution, so Zn2+. Our copper half cell has a copper electrode, which is submerged in a copper 2 plus solution, copper ions. We also have this thing that connects the two things together, which is called a salt bridge. And a salt bridge connects the circuit and allows ions to flow between the two half cells. The electrons, they can only travel through the external wires. We have a voltmeter that allows us to determine the voltage of the cell, but the main thing is electrons only move in the wire and the ions move through the salt bridge. So a Daniel cell is the one that we just looked at. It contains a copper and zinc half cell. And when these two things are joined, we have a spontaneous exothermic, which means releases energy, reaction that can be written as follows. Now, if we go through and assign oxidation numbers to this reaction, we can see that the zinc, it has undergone oxidation. And the copper, it has undergone reduction. So we can see that from the equation. So that means that our zinc half cell is our oxidation half cell and our copper half cell is our reduction half cell. And that makes it easier for us to identify what is known as the anode and the cathode. But first of all, I'm gonna write the equation. So zinc solid turns into zinc two plus ions. And then to balance this half equation, we need to add two electrons to the right hand side to balance for the charge. On the left hand side, the copper two plus ions are reduced to copper solid. So I have to add two electrons on the left hand side to balance for the charge. So they're my half equations that are occurring. So because zinc is undergoing oxidation, the electrons are going from the zinc to the copper. So zinc is losing electrons, copper is gaining electrons. So the electrons are going from left to right. Now electrons are negatively charged, so that means that the zinc electrode must be repelling those electrons, it's the source of the electrons, so it is termed the negative terminal. The positive terminal must be the copper. Now we've, we can apply the saying oil rig, but I have an extension to it, an oil rig cat. AN stands for the anode, so the anode is the place where oxidation occurs. Oxidation occurred in the zinc half cell, so the zinc half cell is the anode. The rig cat part, reduction is gain, and that occurs at the cathode. So the cathode for this reaction is the positive electrode, which is the copper electrode. For a voltaic cell, the negative electrode is always the anode, the positive electrode is always the cathode. Now the salt bridge, the salt bridge contains a salt and it contains ions. So for in this case, our salt bridge contains KNO3 and all it is is a bit of paper soaked in a solution of potassium nitrate, for example. It's an electrolyte, which means that it contains a salt and those salts are dissolved in the solution. 
Now what's happening in the zinc half cell is because it's losing electrons, there's a buildup of positive charge. So the negatively charged ions in the salt bridge make their way towards the anode. The anions move towards the anode. In the copper half cell, we have a buildup of negative charge. So the potassium ions will migrate towards the copper half cell, again, trying to balance that charge. The cations move towards the cathode. So a little bit more in explaining how the cell generates electricity. Okay, well once we connect these two things together with the salt bridge and all of the electrical wires, an electric current will begin to flow. Now that electric current is due to what we call an electromotive force, an EMF. Now an EMF is basically occurs because there is what we describe as a potential difference between the two electrodes. So the spontaneous reaction tells us that one of the reactant, one of the half cells will want to lose electrons while the other one wants to gain electrons. And there's what's known as a potential difference between those two half cells. In this case, the potential difference between a zinc electrode and a copper electrode produces a voltage of about 1.1 volts. If the potential difference was smaller, they would produce a smaller voltage. If the potential difference was bigger, it would produce a bigger potential difference. What is the salt bridge and the electrolyte? Okay, the salt bridge has two jobs. Its first job is to connect the circuit, and it's composed of an electrolyte, so something like an ionic salt, that is soaked onto a filter paper. But it contains ions that are able to flow to each of the half cells. Its two jobs is one, to connect the circuit and two is to maintain what we call electric neutrality. It's trying to balance out the charge in those half cells because if the charge ends up being too great, the cell will stop working and it will stop generating an electric current. Remember that a cations will move to the cathode and the anions will move to the anode in the salt bridge. Also remember that electrons can only move in the wires, electrons can't swim and ions migrate in the salt bridge. Now we need to have proper conditions for these type of reactions. Now the conditions for a Volsaic cell is one molar solutions at 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius, and we have one atmosphere gases. Now if we were to do this in the lab, we might not see a, a voltage of 1.1 volts, and that's because our circuit might contain some internal resistance, which lowers the voltage that we see. So just to remember, the electrode where oxidation takes place is the anode, the electrode where reduction takes place is the cathode, remember the saying, an oil rig cat. So here we're asked to label a galvanic cell containing a solution of silver nitrate in a graphite electrode along with a copper and copper 2 plus half cell. We've been given the reaction copper solid plus silver ions goes to silver solid plus copper 2 plus ions. So we need to go through and fill in all the parts. So in our silver half cell, we would actually have a graphite electrode. I've just labeled that incorrectly. We have silver ions and nitrate ions in the solutions. We have our copper electrode and our copper 2 plus ions with the copper half cell. Please, if you're asked to label, make sure you include arrows and make sure you include the lines where the solution would fill up to. Don't just put copper 2 plus, make sure you put the anion as well, because if we go into the lab, we need a soluble salt. So it will have both a cation and anion. I need to connect my half cells with my salt bridge and the best chemical to use for your salt bridge is KNO3 because it won't react with anything else in the half cells. We have a voltmeter so we can measure the voltage and we have our electrical wires connecting the two electrodes. Now we need to work out which species has undergone oxidation and reduction, so we use our oxidation numbers to do that. We can see that the copper has gone from zero to two plus, so it has been oxidized, so it's undergone oxidation, which means it's the negative electrode, which is the anode in a voltaic cell. The silver electrode has undergone reduction, or the silver half cell has undergone reduction, so it must be the cathode, it's positively charged. So that means that electrons are going from the copper to the silver, so electrons are flowing from left to right. We also need to label the 
ions in the salt bridge. So remember that the anions go towards the anode and the cations go towards the cathode. So the nitrate ions move towards the anode to balance the positive charge. The potassium ions move towards the cathode to balance the buildup of negative charge. Now we have this little cell diagram convention, which is another way of writing what we see here. We write the species that are undergoing oxidation on the left and we separate them with two lines to indicate the salt bridge to what is undergoing reduction on the right. So here we have it, CUS and then a line indicating that that is one part of the half cell and Cu2 plus aqueous. Then we have our two lines which indicate our salt bridge and then we have Ag plus and Ag solid on the right hand side. That's the convention. Okay, volume saw for some top tips. Remember, an oil rig cat. Remember that electrons can't swim, they only move through the wires. And then in an exam, you'll probably be asked to label rather than draw. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.